there is only one structure in this tissue that you need to find to know its kidney. So I took this kidney slide, quickly scanned it for you with my tiny path of zoom camera to show you this one structure and the rest of the kidney. And the structure of interest is the glomerulus or renal corpuscle. And it's even visible from this magnification. If you look here, these round structures are the glomeruli. So let me zoom in. This is the glomerulus. It's more or less round in shape and looks a little bit like clover flower. So if you find them here, 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 and here, and all over the place, you know you're in kidney, but there's a lot more to kidney. So let's dive into it. So if we wanna take a structured approach, like we would under the light microscope, we go from low magnification to later high magnification. And let me flip it. And here is the outside of the kidney. And here would be the inside of the kidney. The outside is covered with the capsule. The whole organ is covered with the capsule all the way around. And the outside of the kidney is called the cortex, like the cortex, like the bark of the tree. And the inside is called medulla, where the cortex contains our glomeruli. So our dividing line would be more or less where the glomeruli end and then everything on this side would be our cortex and on the other side is the medulla. In the cortex we have glomeruli and tubules whereas in the medulla we only have tubules. These structures are the tubules. Oh this is a beautiful tubule. Cortex and medulla together, they create renal pyramid. And here we even have a pyramidal section. Although we don't have all the anatomical structures of the kidney here, but we have all the histological structures. When we zoom into the cortex, we're going to see um, some tubules here that are filled with cytoplasm. This pink thing is filling them and this is cytoplasm, and these are called proximal tubules. All those closed that you don't really see the lumen are proximal convoluted tubules. Some of them, I think they were filled with cytoplasm, but in the processing, this detached. So I would think this still would be a proximal tubule. But when we go towards the medulla, we see that these guys have a real lumen, have real space inside, and these are called distal convoluted tubules. Those who have the guts to have a lumen are distal tubules. And obviously they're also distal. They're all farther away from the surface, from the cor cortex. And when we take a closer look at the glomerulus, uh, let's find a beautiful one. This one is, is beautiful. We will see that it's this clover flower inside of some space, some white space surrounded with a membrane and there are some cells on this membrane and on one end here at the top the glomerulus is free whereas at the bottom it is actually attached. The free end is called the urinary pole and the attached end is called vascular pole and this space here is called urinary space. So at this vascular pole at the bottom it's actually attached to blood vessels. Let's see if we can see it in other glomeruli. Oh here is a beautiful example. Urinary pole and vascular pole. And there are three kinds of cells that you can find in the glomerulus. Believe me, are there, but on h &E scanned at 20x, they might not always be distinguishable, but there are special stains that can be used for that. So let me show you. On the inside of the glomerular capsule, we have the parietal cells of the Bowman's capsule. Parietal means on the wall side. Parietal means wall, and they are here. So depending on the level of preservation of our specimen, we can have some clumps of stuff here that just got detached, but, but these are the parietal epithelial cells of the Bowman capsule. And then we have a bunch of cells here and they belong to two categories, Bowman's visceral epithelium and mesangial cells. And they are all here convoluted together. And I wouldn't be able to say which one is which, but they're there together. And the Bowman's visceral epithelium are the podocytes, whereas the mesangial cells are the cells coming from the vessels that come into the glomerulus to filtrate blood. And that is kidney. 
The tubuli are not that complex histological structures. They just have tubular epithelium and some have lumen and some have less lumen. The ones with lumen are the distal tubules. The ones without are the proximal capsule on the outside, cortex with glomeruli that look like clover flowers, medulla with tubuli. And whenever you find the glomerulus, you know this comes from kidney and the tubules are actually pretty characteristic as well. So even if you get a section when there is no glomerulus, you can see that there is a bunch of loops cut through, and these are the renal tubules. We also have a bunch of vessels that have erythrocytes, red blood cells inside, but every organ has that. We may find areas where we have this loose pink connective tissue, in increased amount, this is fibrosis. And we also have these dark blue cells. And these fibrotic areas are, are areas where damage happened. So where damage happened, the inflammatory cells, lymphocytes and mononuclear inflammatory cells come in to help out. They're a remnant of the inflammation. And if it's not too much, it's not a big deal. So now you know how to recognize kidney, look for the clover-like glomeruli, and this video would not be possible without digital pathology, without me scanning the slide. So to learn more about digital pathology, check this video to learn what digital pathology is. And if you'd like to scan your own slide collection, I have a video about the PathoZoom Life and Scan system that can be used for digitizing glass slides. So check it out as well. And I talk to you in the next episode.